Okay, we'll go ahead and take this. Color. Uh, <laughs> Color, welcome to your What's your question for Rabbi? I have a question that I think I would be happy if uh, Rabbi Tov would answer me. Because it's according to the New Testament. Why do you think that Luke invented the whole story about the census and going to from Nazareth to Bethlehem so Jesus would be born in Bethlehem? Why not do like uh, Matthew did? He put uh, Joseph and Mary in Bethlehem from the beginning. That was the home, Bethlehem. Why invented the old story about Nazareth? This will sound very interesting to most of the viewers. So as it turns out, 27 books in the Christian Bible, only two of them mention that Jesus was born to a virgin in Bethlehem. You won't find it in the earliest writings of the New Testament. You won't find it in any of the letters of Paul. And you won't find it in Mark, the earliest gospel. But you will find it in two gospels in Matthew and Luke as the caller indicated. John wants nothing to do with any of this, so he actually dismisses the whole idea in John 7. But as it turns out, although the passion narratives contradict each other widely, the infancy narrative, as is conveyed by Matthew and Luke, are more contradictory than even the passion narratives. The caller is asking the question, why didn't Luke, whoever wrote the book of Luke, why didn't he, and I assure you it's a he, women in the first century were not literate. Why didn't he do what Matthew did? So it just requires a little explanation. What Matthew and Luke have in common is that they both convey that Jesus was born to a virgin named Mary in the city of Bethlehem. As I said, we don't find that in the other Gospels. We don't find that in the letters of Paul. As I mentioned in John, in fact, the question is, how could Jesus be the Messiah if it doesn't the Messiah have to be born in Bethlehem? And there's no even response to that. So Matthew and Luke each independently use a different plot device to have Jesus born in Bethlehem. You can be sure that the reason why the author of Luke has Jesus born in Bethlehem to parents who come from Nazareth, because that's how Luke's story traces. The couple Mary and Joseph start out in Nazareth. There's a, a worldwide a census of the empire by Octavius Caesar Augustus, in which everyone has to return to their ancestral city. We are told in Luke that Bethlehem is the ancestral city of Joseph, who is from the house of David. So why did Luke do that? Because according to Matthew, the family starts out in Bethlehem. That's where home is. And then the, the family is forced to go down to Egypt to escape the slaughter of the innocents. And then eventually they don't go back to home, Bethlehem, but they're warned rather by an angel that you go somewhere else, go to Nazareth, don't go back to Bethlehem because Herod Archelaus is now in charge and he's crazier than his father. Why would Luke do that? And the answer is that Luke was trying to stay closer to the truth. The family was originally from Nazareth. The Bethlehem part is what's made up. The Bethlehem story, the story of Jesus being born in Bethlehem, is interpolated. It's added in. It's invented. Why? Why would Matthew and Luke want to have Jesus born in Bethlehem? Because King David was born in Bethlehem. It's the city of David. We're told that. I am sure that most of the viewers, I, I don't want to, most people, I think, believe that in the first century, like just all 27 books of the New Testament were there bound in a book they would find in your night table at a local motel room. Well, that's not the case. Um, these books were being written in different parts of the empire independently. Of course, Matthew and Luke were using uh, Mark and other sources, but they then had to create a plot device of how do you get a family who is a Na family from Nazareth, how do you get them to Bethlehem to be born there? The reason why Luke uses um, Nazareth as the starting place for Joseph and Mary is because that was the starting place for Joseph and Mary. The only thing is it started and ended there. Luke has the family come down to Bethlehem from Nazareth. Let's say they're Nazareth to Bethlehem. I don't know, maybe 80 kilometers away. Not that far. 
but it really is, by Israel terms, it's from the Upper Galilee to Judea. Let's say it's 80, let's say it's 100 kilometers, whatever. So there's some reason why someone would have to, the family would have to come there. And something very compelling. In the ancient world, people didn't travel a lot. It was a very, it was problematic, not like today. So there's something very compelling. This worldwide census where people had to go back to their ancestral homeland, which is, it never happened. That's completely made up. Luke's story has to get the family back to Nazareth. And that's where they're both, Matthew and Luke, are, are not like, you know, emailing each other going, hey, Matthew, what, how did you do this? Uh, let me tell you how I did it. I had the family start out in Bethlehem, then go down to Egypt, and then shoot up to, to Nazareth because of a warning. They, they're not communicating with each other. It's just the idea that Jesus' beginning starts off at a, with a miracle conception, which was an idea ensconced in all the pagan religions of the ancient world and the great men of the ancient world, such as Alexander the Great, the founder of the West, such as Romulus, the founder of Rome, such as everybody. The idea that the great people were born to a virgin were, this was all over the place. So, so Luke then, after Jesus' birth in a manger, in a barn, with, she can't even get a room at the, hotel, at the inn. There's no room. There's no problem like that in Matthew. So then, once, once Jesus is born in the book of Luke, and he's adored and worshipped by some he, shepherds, they then make their way back to Jerusalem, which Jerusalem and Nazareth, if you made a dot where Nazareth is in the upper Galilee and where Bethlehem is, in, in just right there in Judea, below Jerusalem, and you drew a line, it would almost cut right through Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be much closer to Bethlehem. Further south of Jerusalem, will, much of Jerusalem is in Judea. So she then, the family then goes to Jerusalem. She then brings the appropriate offerings that a new mother is supposed to bring, and they head home to Nazareth after 30 days, and that's where Jesus is raised. In fact, only Luke do we have Jesus' teenage story. It's only found in Luke. According to Matthew, none of that happened. They went down to Egypt and there for a long time until Herod the Great died. So there's no going back to Nazareth right away. So the reason why Luke writes a story that way is because he doesn't have the book of Matthew in front of him. I don't know if Luke was sure that his book would actually get published. But remember this, in the ancient world, in the first, second century, people didn't have all four Gospels in front of them. We find that already in the second century that references are being made to the words of the apostles. And finally, by the time of Irenaeus, the bishop of Lyon, that's 180 or so, then we have the identified books that Matthew was written by Matthew, Luke, Luke, and so on. And that's, don't forget about what people tell you about Papias. So that's the reason. Luke just took a very simple thing. The kid was always known to be from Nazareth. That's what Jesus was known as. In fact, that's his name. He's not only called Jesus Christ, but he's also called Jesus of what? Jesus of, he's never called Jesus of Bethlehem. Why? Why isn't he called, he's always called Jesus of Nazareth, because that's the truth. The Bethlehem stuff is made up. And therefore, Luke is taking a more natural court, just having the family start out in Nazareth, shoot down to Bethlehem where the baby is born, and shoot right back up to Nazareth, and that's where Jesus is raised. It's Matthew who's more of a daredevil, but they're doing this independently in two different, I don't know where they were, but they sure weren't looking over each other's shoulders, or they would have, you know, copied this plot device, and they didn't. That's why they're so widely different, they're so, not just divert, but so completely contradictory. That's a really good question. Luke just took a natural route. Very good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> I've always wondered why. You know, the, the way the church tries to explain it is, you know, and we've heard this a thousand times, but they're, they're parallels, you know, so they're, they're giving you different viewpoints from different, you know, from where they saw here. You know, that maybe this guy didn't think that was important to include the fact that he was in that. Right. That right. I write about this in volume one of Let's Get Biblical. I, I just want you to know, Christians go to Midnight Mass 
and see they know there are differences if they're paying any attention but they feel like exactly what you said that there's a general harmony and they're just providing different things and it all is one nice harmony it's not it's a nightmare the two stories don't work it just goes side by side they're actually they're reverse they're shooting in two different directions and what happens is precisely what you see when you compare Matthew to Luke talking about the infancy narrative what you see is exactly what you'd expect two people independently inventing a story and they're not even close they're completely there's no Egypt in Luke's story Adon Olaf Asher Malach V'terem Kol Yetzir Nivra